Good morning, guys. You know, I'm still on the book of Job. I got to tell you how wonderful the Lord God is that everything that we worry about, he takes care of. He takes care of everything in this whole world, everything. Look at this. You know, Job was sick and he was almost at death's door. He was at death's door because he had been sick and lying in the bed for so long. So this is what happened here in Job 37. This is what Job said to God. He said, my heart pounds as I think of this. It trembles within me. He said, listen carefully. He said, listen to the thunder of God's voice as it rose from his mouth. It was thundering and lightning. He said, it rose across the heavens and his lightning flashes in every direction. Then comes the roaring of the thunder, the tremendous uh, voice of his majesty. He said, he does not restrain it when he speaks. He said, God's voice is glorious in the thunder. We can't even imagine the greatness of his power. He said, he directs the snow to fall on the earth and he tell the rain to pour down. Then everyone stop working so they can watch his power. He said, the wild animals take cover and stay inside their dens. The stormy winds come from his chamber and the driving winds bring the cold. He said, God's breath sends the ice, freezing wide expanses of water. He loads the clouds with moisture and they flash with his lightning. The clouds churn about at his direction. They do whatever he commands throughout the earth. He make these things happen either to punish people or to show his unfailing love. Pay attention to this, Job. Stop and consider the wonderful miracles of God. Do you know how God controls the storm and causes the lightning to flash from his clouds? Do you understand how he moves the clouds with wonderful per perfection and skill? When you are sweltering in your clothes and the south wind dies down and everything is still, he makes the skies reflect the heat like a bronze mirror. Can you do that? So teach the rest of us what to say to God. We are too ignorant to make our own arguments. Should God be notified that I want to speak? Can people even speak when they are confused? We cannot look at the sun for it shines brightly in the sky. When the wind clears away the clouds, so also golden splendor comes from the mountains of God. He is clothed in dazzling splendor and we cannot imagine the power of the Almighty. But even though he is just and righteous, he does not destroy us. No wonder people everywhere fear him. All who are wise show his reverence. And this is so true. When you speak about the storm, how God directs the storm. Let me tell you something. My uncle passed away. He gone now. He was military. Uh, he was a uh, Marine, simplified. He was a Marine. And so... Um, he was all about self-preservation of life. He used to say all of that, preserve your life. Uh, one time, my uncle had experienced some bad tornadoes where they lived. And he said, I was sitting in the house. Listen to this. He said, I was sitting in the house. He said, I was looking out the window at the storm. You know how you look out the window to see if the storm is coming, right? And my uncle said, all the houses around him were messed up. He said the house he was in, the storm didn't touch it. Listen, listen to this, listen to this. And he said, when I looked out the window and I seen that whirlwind, he said, all I could do was call on God. And he said, God save us in this house and don't let the storm touch us. My uncle sat down right there. He said, I hunkered down where I was at and I told everybody else to get down low and hunker down. He said the storm passed by us. He said the storm didn't touch us. He said when we went outside, all the houses were messed up around us. He said, but our house was not even touched. And he said he couldn't believe it. But he said he called on God and God heard him. And he did not, he was not touched. You hear me? My uncle, he was one of the closest uncles I had because he raised me as though he was my father, you know. And uh, his name was Lucius. He gone now. But he, you know, he died. He had a, uh, a cancer that was in his colon. 
Then it's, it, it cut the colon out, thinking they could get rid of the cancer, but it came back on him years later. Then it went to his liver. And when it went to his liver, he didn't want to get cut on no more. So he just, he took radiation, but not chemo. And he, he ended up dying eventually. He would get blood transfusions to keep his blood circulating, you know. But all the time my uncle was sick, this one thing he would say, which was the 23rd Psalm. And he said, I learned it when I was in the military. Yea, though I walked through the valley of shell of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, thy with me. He said, I learned it because he said when he was in the military, a lot of time when they had to march through the woods and the forest and places they didn't know. He said they would recite that. The whole camp would recite the 23rd Psalm. So when he got real sick, that's what he recited. That's what he recited. But another thing, too, about the storm, the Lord controls the storm. He controls the storm. He controls the weather. He controls the time. He controls the earth. He controls the stars. He controls everything. Now, listen, we get down here to verse 38, and the Lord challenges Job. This is what he said to Job. Job didn't complain. You know, he didn't talk to his friends. He didn't tell God, why did you let me come through the birth canal in the first place? Why did you even think of me in the twinkling of your eye to be a, a spark of light to come into my mother's womb? Why? He said, why do you just take me away at the beginning and don't even let me come in here to experience this? That's what he was telling God. And so this is what the Lord said to him. The Lord challenges Job. He said in verse 38, the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. Who is this that questioned my wisdom with such ignorant words? He said, brace yourself like a man. God said, brace yourself like a man. He said, stand up and be a man. This is what he told him. And he said, because I have some questions for you. He said, stand up. He said, because I have some questions for you and you must answer them. Okay, my battery trying to fume on out on me at a time like this. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get my... Uh, how to get my battery connected. This is what he said. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? He said, tell me if you know so much. Who determined its dimensions and stretched out the surveying line, which supports its foundation? And who laid its cornerstone? As the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Listen at the Lord. The Lord said, I did this thing. He said, the angel shouted for joy when I was doing this. He said, I laid out this foundation and stretched it and knowed all the circumference. He said, where were you when I did this thing? When I created this thing that you even live and walk and talk on, where were you? He was nowhere to be found. Then he said, who kept the seas inside its boundaries, kept the water from bursting out? He said, who did this? Where were you? He said, where were you when I wrapped it in thick darkness, when I wrapped the clouds around at night? He said, where were you? For I locked it behind barred gates, limiting its shores. He said, I said this far and no further will you come. Here, your proud waves must stop. He did all of that. He instructs the waters. He instructs the cloud. He instructs the darkness, the day and the night. He does all of this. You know, he does all this and he's telling Job this. Have you ever commanded the morning to appear? and cause the dawn to rise in the east? Have you made daylight spread to the ends of the earth to bring an end to the night's wickedness as the light approaches? He does this, he does that. He make the daylight come and the dawn come from the east and the sun rise. This is God telling Job, I do all these things. He said, where, where are you? Where were you? Where, where are you when I'm doing all this work? I do this work for you. He said, the earth takes shape like clay pressed beneath a seal as it robbed in, robed in brilliant colors. The light disturbs the wicked and stops stop the arm that is raised in violence. He said, when the light come in, it stops the violence. When the day come in, it stops the night. Did you hear that? This is God. He said, have you explored the springs from which the seas come? Have you explored their depths? Do you know where the gates of death are located? Have you seen the gates of utter gloom? Do you realize the extent of the earth? 
Tell me about it if you know. He knows everything. He knows death down in the bottom of the pit. He knows what's in hell. He knows what's in the grave. He knows who in the grave. He knows all of that. He said, do you know any of these things about life? He said, you don't know nothing. He said, where does light come from? And where does darkness go when light disappears? He said, do you know that? He said, can you take each to his home? Can you take light to rest? And can you take day to rest where it goes when it rests at night? Light and day has to rest and it has to rest just like you go to sleep. The light rests and the day rests. He said, do you know that? He says, but of course, you know all this, right? For you were born before it was all created. And you are so very experienced. This is God talking to Job. He said, have you visited the storehouses of the snow or seen the storehouses of hell? He said, I have reserved them as weapons for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war. He said, where is the path? to the source of light? Where is the home of the east wind? Who created a channel for the torrents of rain? Who laid out the paths for the lightning? Who makes the rain fall on barren land in a desert where no one lives? Who sends rain to satisfy the parched ground and make the tender grass spring up? This is the Lord right here. He said, does the rain have a father? Who gives birth to the dew? Who is the mother of the ice? Who gives birth to the frost from the heavens? For the water turns to ice as hard as rock, and the surface of the water freezes. Can you direct the movement of the stars, binding clusters of the palisades, or loosening the cords of Orion? Can you direct the sequence of the seasons, or guide the bear with her cubs across the heavens? Do you know the law of the universe? Can you use them to regulate the earth? The Lord is inquisitive. He has the Lord power is so high and so great. We can't, we don't know the mind of God. You cannot know his mind. And we're down here worrying about these little insignificant things. This is what he told Job. He said, you were, he, he, yeah, he, he let the devil have his way with Job for a little while to see what Job would do. Because Job was such a blameless man, so respected of the community. So Job told, you know, his friends and he told everybody, he said, everybody complains. He said, I'm going to have my time to complain. He complained to all his friends and everybody else about what was going on. When he wouldn't take his complaint to God, this is the response God gave him. God did not want to hear his complaints. He said, even he was sick in his bed, on his sick bed. He said, I don't want to hear your complaints, even in sickness. He said, because I have the ability to do all these things. But in the end, I'm going to finish reading you these things. The Lord continued to challenge him, even in 39. He said, do you know when the wild goat give birth? Have you watched as deer are born in the wild? Do you know how many months they carry their young? The Lord know everything. He know everything about every animal in the wilderness, every little minute detail of everything that we worry about or think about. He already know. He know how to send the angels down from heaven to protect you. He know how to give an angel to encompass your home. Watch your back when you in your car. I'm going to tell you, I've been in some accidents where I have seen angels come down and pull the car back. And so it was only just a little scratch on the front bumper. Could have been worse. You can't tell me God ain't amazing. I've seen some things. He has angels to protect you. And you get up with your back against the wall and call on him and see don't he save you. I know you think I'm crazy, but this is this is really happening. But you have to believe in the strength of the Lord and Jesus Christ. Everybody in the world want to go after all these different gods. But the Lord God told Jesus he died to save your soul. He said, come up here, my son, and sit on my right hand while I make your enemies your footstool. So you all need to take note and believe in the Lord. You don't want to be up under his foot because when you're up under his foot, you, you're not in a good place. You want to be above ground. You don't want to be up beneath. He said, come up here, my son, and sit right here. Everybody who don't believe in the name of Jesus and believe that he can save self, salvation, cover you, cover your sins, you become his enemy. You become beneath him. You become his enemy. You don't want to be beneath the Lord. You don't want to be beneath and under. 
You don't want to be down there. You don't want to be beneath. You want to be above. So take heed, guys. But I'm going to take a break because I got to charge my phone. But the Lord responds in Job. You know, in the beginning of Genesis, he said how he created the heaven and earth in six days. And he said, it is good. Everything he created, he said, it's good. It's very good. He enjoyed creating the world and the expanses and the animals and the earth and the people. He enjoyed this. This was a labor of love. Now here he tells Job that he knows about everything that he created and every minute little thing that it does. He said, I know all of these things because I take care of it every day. I take care of these things every day. That's what he's telling Job. But he gave Job back everything. He gave him back his home, his wife. He gave him back his three daughters and his four sons. He gave him back much more land than what he had, two or three times over the amount that he had. So all the greatness that he had before, that he was worried about, he lost. The Lord gave him back a whole lot more. He even lived to 140 years old. He lived to way, way, way old age to see even the second set of children uh, have children and grow, and grow. And, you know, for him to live that old and be able to say, I have truly experienced, I've been sick and ill in my bed and back again, come back from death, from almost dying, you know, with God. So he lived a long time and even to tell about it. So anyway, that's the end of Job. So read Job, you can start at 39, how beautiful the Lord tells about all the things that he does for this world. And, you know, it's his creation and he know everything in it, the little bird that flies in the sky. The rain, the tornado, the season. He knows all of that. The day, the night, the seasons. How the clouds do that. He knows all of these things. You And you worry about the little thing that we worry about. All you got to do is take him to prayer. God already know how to solve them for you. All right, I'll talk to you later. Have a good morning.